And welcome back to the Smart Tank Revolution, where we always kick out at two. I am your host, the benevolent, intelligent Mr. Donnie Wonderful. I'm flying solo once again today in a continuous effort to pump out some ongoing content for our faithful listeners and to um, also attract some new ones. And uh, this edition will be, unfortunately, you know, at the dismay of uh, many of our loyal fans who are more familiar with the uh, structure that we usually record. And yes, I say we, I'm not just speaking French, but I'm usually joined by my co-host, uh, the, the Taunton Tribal Chief, if he still uh, wears that tag, Mr. Joey Business, and we'll be reuniting soon because at the time of uh, recording, uh, we're just days away from WWE's Elimination Chamber, and we'll definitely be reunited there and recording some content out to you guys, so you'll be um, you'll get reacquainted with our tangential banter, so to speak. But in the midst of um, producing some content for another channel uh i decided to cut this mic on and add um a part three to our new playlist entitled the essentials where we where we rate wrestlers past present maybe even prospective future can't see how that would be possible but you know who knows and you know we we, we pretty much uh are the uh, innovators of any type of creation here <laughs> but um but yeah we, we we have a very um interesting uh rating scale we rate wrestlers based on two rating scales um i guess um we'll always have to have to preface uh that we get one rating system from the excellence of execution in my opinion the greatest professional wrestler to lace a pair, a pair of boots mr brett the hitman Hart, um his rating scale and we also have a unique one um an exclusive smart tank revolution uh rating scale too and um i encourage everyone to go back and listen to um part one part two as well as the other content that we have on the channel and the other interviews. But specifically, if you're here, I would love for you guys to go back and listen to part one uh, where I broke down um, the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. And then, in my opinion, one of the greatest follow-ups since The Godfather, you hear part two where my co-host and partner in crime, Mr. Joey Business, breaks down Brett the Hitman Heart and... He did a really good job. Joey did a really great job with expounding on some of the attributes that should be included when we talk about a wrestler's look. Um, and I'll go through that soon. And I know um, I'm, what, probably almost about five minutes in. I haven't even got to the wrestler that I'm doing today. But one thing that I do want to add um, that I think that should be... Um, a staple in this is when we talk about a wrestler's look let's talk about his attire as well and just to backtrack on on part two where, where joey talks about bret hart um i think the pink look really made bret more welcoming pink isn't an alarming color and i th listening to to joey's assessment on bret hart made me really question and realize that Brett's look, and when we talk about look and Brett's um, assessment of what makes a good wrestler, look pretty much really means the body, but Joey went went on with the attire too, and I always loved Brett's attire, and I thought it was uh, really welcoming and um, really creative to have all those designs in predominantly pink and black, so... Um, and and I even asked Brett this in in an interview, which I'll also um, provide that link to um, an interview we did with Bret Hart when he came to um, the Massachusetts area. Oh, I got an alert, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Bret Hart came to um, the Massachusetts area in 2017. And actually, uh, is a regular here with um with with big time wrestling promotion, and we were able to. Um, 
to uh, you know do photography and um, and media for that. But uh, but yeah, I, ju- I just wanted to backtrack a bit and and talk about that. But okay, let's get into this. The Essentials Part Three: The Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, which I think is a um, a really really great pick. Um, you know, what can you follow? Brett with I mean, what can you follow HBK with okay his nemesis Brett and then from there like when you set the the bar that high um, there are tons of um, former champions in, in Hall of Famers that we can that we could have went with but I decided to choose one that was never a, um, a world champion or an intercontinental champion during his prime WWF run back in the day because I think that it's it's going to make for an interesting um, rating f- with uh, within the categories that we're given, which are. So first, we're going to go through the uh, the Bret Hart uh, assessment, which ranks or scores everything from one to ten. So we have a wrestler's look, their physique, appearance and presentation. And um, like I mentioned earlier, uh on um joey's assessment of bret hart he really went in and um really you know gave us more meat of the presentation and and what that should entail now uh, my my interpretation of that was uh you know how he was presented to uh the audience within his character um but joey like i said and uh kudos to you brother for for really expounding on that and i'll definitely keep that in mind going forward so when we're talking about the million dollar man ted dibiase so the the physique is very believable i uh he's about i think uh in his in his wrestling he's about six between six two and six four um you know when he debuted he had the blonde hair then he went to the uh you know the darker colored um you know the uh, the the goatee with the chin straps. Uh, like his appearance looked very believable. I score very high if your appearance looks believable. Which uh, at the time when he came in um, the WWF, I know Vince was was really big and high on on big guys and large guys. Um, you know his ring attire was uh <laughs> it was basic you know the dollar sign but I think the um the magic within the character was was how he was able to uh, to pull it off and 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 look believable and sound believable which I think he did um so even with um with with Virgil at his corner uh, Virgil at his side his butler I think like the appearance and have, the appearance with that was real I think. Ted DiBiase was in decent shape, you know. He, he looks like a looks like a football player. Um, you know, wasn't really jacked to the gills, but you know, presentable. Like you can, he can go out on the beach topless, you know, shirtless, I should say. Uh, and like didn't really give the dad bod vibes until later on in his career, and you know. Who can blame him? He's a millionaire. So <laughs> I think that also gave him some immunity to the fact that he wasn't Jack like the Ultimate Warrior or even like like uh, like Jack like Virgil was uh, back in his prime. So on a 1 to 10 on the Bret Hart scale for a wrestler's look, I'm going to give him uh, an 8.5. And that may be generous. Uh, I may want to lean towards now that i think about it more more 7.5 uh so since i'm at an impasse between uh i'm a point off 7.5 8.5 i'm just gonna meet in the middle and just say eight so that i'm i'm comfortable with that uh next uh scored from a one to ten is uh the promo ability ted dibiase could always cut a good promo and and on top of that he has a signature laugh, a signature sign off. Anytime you can do that or anytime you have that, I think that elevates you. It's what we it's what we can expect. It's your it's the period at the end of the sentence. Ric Flair has the woo. Um, you know, the rock had the if you can you smell what the rock was cooking. Um, that's the bottom line. Stone Cold said so. 
Brett, the best there is, best there was, best there ever will be. And Ted DiBiase had the laugh that I'm not going to try to duplicate now. Um, but um, the promo ability, I can't think of a classic Ted D- oh, Never mind. Sorry. Not that this is a, a, a promo, but it's the segment. I posted this on my um, my Facebook page uh, two years ago or three years ago and got the uh, Facebook memories and posted it again. Ted DiBiase challenging the little boy to dribble the, the bounce the ball 10 times to win, I think, like $100. And he dribbled, oh, no, 15 times. And then when he gets to 14, he kicks the ball out of the little boy's hand. Hilarious. Hilarious. That's not necessarily a promo, but, man, does that give you heel heat. Man, does that give you heel heat. Um, Ted DiBiase, I do remember as a young child, um, the Virgil turn, and we were all waiting for it, man. This guy is treating Virgil like a piece of crap, cutting promos on him, telling him to to get the, um, to rub his toes, to massage his feet. Uh, so it was definitely really believable, um, especially back then. Uh, but his promo ability, I'm going to, I'm going to give him a nine. I'm going to give him a nine off the strength that I can't pull from my hat. The classic Ted DiBiase promos is the only reason why I'm not giving him a perfect 10, even though he's likely deserving of one, but this is primarily centered around the WWF run and the later WCW runs as well. Um, so next, um, is the in ring work from, um, scored from one to 10, uh, defined as the ability to perform or in and execute a variety of wrestling moves in a manner, which makes sense and accompanied by other innovative improvised, blah, blah, all that wordy stuff It's all in the description. So you'll, you guys can read it there. So the, um, the in ring work of Ted DiBiase is a 10, uh, perfect 10. Uh, the guy's um, a great wrestler, and he wrestles in a style which, which is safe. That um, I believe his career ended due to a back injury, and I'll have to do more research on whether it was wrestling related or something outside of the ring. But he wrestled a really safe style, uh, no high flying maneuvers, as Vince used to say, no or high risk maneuvers. Actually, um, had a, had a had a real style that was true to his size and um you know with his finisher being uh, an adaptation of the sleeper aptly aptly <laughs> or or i should say um appropriately uh titled the million dollar dream so on bret hart's uh rating list um uh, i think he he, fa- he fares out pretty well um and an above average talent and above average wrestler now, when we move to the smart tank, our our own rating system, which we call the essentials, here's where the things get interesting. It's um it's a one to five score. So, you know, it keeps the rating scale in the in 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 the overall scores really, really, really tight. And um I think in this case we can rate somebody a one and even though the one is the lowest score that you can give, sometimes I think uh, as we go down the line with wrestlers, it may be the only score that's applicable or, or accurate. Um, because here, uh, we rank from one to five. Uh, the first the first attribute is uh, the innovative effectiveness, the ability to work as a baby face or a heel. Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man, the million dollar snob, um, no, he's a, I, he's a perfect heel, a perfect heel, but this, this, um, ranking here, this factor here basically says, could you work, can you work as both? So someone like, uh, it's primed for like a, uh, Seth Rollins, type of wrestler you know Seth has been a baby face Seth has been a heel or to put it to you like this if 
this were Roman Reigns 24 months ago, we wouldn't know because he didn't have his heel turn yet. So now that Roman Reigns has kind of come alive in his heel, heel character, obviously he, he would probably tip the top of the scale. So with that being said, I couldn't tell you how the million dollar man Ted DiBiase would work as a baby face. I've never seen it. Uh, by the time he made that um, baby face turn, baby face run in WCW, he was only a manager. And I honestly don't think that the uh, Million Dollar Man gimmick would work as a baby face. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give him a two here. Now, Ted DiBiase, in my opinion, is talented, to, talented enough to have made any role that was given to him a success. And if he was given the task to pull off the Million Dollar Man as a baby face, I'm pretty sure he would have told Vince, I got it. I know just how to do it. And I think he would have done it. But um, as far as I can remember, I in, the Smart Tank Revolution scale, <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean that they're bad. It's, it's just, a lot of these things we're pulling off of memory. But I can't tell you when um, I've ever seen the million dollar man ted dibiase as a baby face it's, it's just not it's just not there for me um the next is the classic matches and the classic rivalries uh scored from one to five you know pretty self-explanatory um the million dollar man ted dibiase as far as having a classic match i know a lot of people won't consider this classics but the uh the run he had with uh the dusty roads the american dream there was some really good wrestling unfortunately no one's ever really going to talk about it um the chemistry between him and jake roberts look at wrestlemania 6 phenomenal oh phenomenal like i can watch those two all day nobody's ever really going to talk about it or even reference it when we discuss the Million Dollar Man, we typically focus on the character and how he was able to to personify a rich, corrupted savage, honestly, that um, <laughs> would try to buy championships and and basically would use his use his opulence to to get his way. But we don't talk about the classic matches. And I think there's some really good ones in there. But classic, I just can't find the classic one. That the aha, or if I mention, hey, were you a fan of the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase? And I may find guys that, that would agree. But as far as um, um, like the matches that they would like to see or what they would consider classic, they would have to be wrestling fans. They would have to be wrestling, diehard wrestling fans. And as I'm scra scraping the craters of my brain for the data to give you about a classic um, match uh, with Ted DiBiase, I mean, I am thinking of um, uh, Randy Savage at, at WrestleMania 4, but I think that that would have been better had they had a longer lasting feud because i know it did spill into SummerSlam with the mega powers versus the mega bucks but um we could have given uh randy savage and and ted dibiase a half an hour i think i think they would have they really would have stole the show but uh again you know it's it's gonna score low because i can't think of a classic match so i'm i'm gonna do uh a, a 2.5 here uh, I really wanted to say one, but like I'm really a fan of Ted DiBiase. Really, am a fan of Ted DiBiase, and my heart just couldn't. I, I couldn't do it. My 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 heart couldn't put him at the bottom. So um, two and a half here, two point five rather, and then the last thing on our rating system, uh, defining or redefining moments. Ooh, okay. Um, this is another hard one for me. Um because he was a really really great heel 
um, even after his wrestling days were, were 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 behind him, his run in ninety four to ninety five or ninety six when he had the million dollar corporation, when he um, corrupted the Tonka, when um, the crown jewel of the million dollar corporation became Sid, you know, like there's some really great stuff in there. It's all watchable. Um, I just can't really put a finger on a defining moment not like in comparison to um to uh hbk and bret hart so um like i guess in hindsight now we probably should have (laughs) waited you should probably should have broke the ice uh with with a wrestler that wasn't a multi-time heavyweight champion uh with someone else but um yeah i'm gonna have to go 2.5 here again and you know it hurts to to actually I'm gonna have to go with it too. <laughs> it it hurts to rank to rank them so low on our um definitely promote Ted DB the million dollar man Ted DiBiase's career in WWF and WCW as a successful one hands down is he a Hall of Famer yes does he deserve all the accolades. That 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 he's had as far as being um being a great wrestling mind and and even the work that he did before the WWF before his WWF run does he deserve all that praise? Absolutely. Is Donnie Wonderful a fan of Ted DiBiase? Absolutely. The Bret Hart scale was more kind to him than our essential scale. But I will conclude with reminding you all that I'm a fan of the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase. And who knows, maybe even our rating system will 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 get touched up and, and do some redefining on our own. But yeah, that's my uh that's my score for both the uh the Bret Hart scale and the Smart Tank Revolution scale, the essential. So until the next one guys, thanks for listening.